call my name when no one's there Except a feeling in the air But you and I both know that the house is a honey Yeah, you and I both know that the ghost is you Used to walk around screaming, all swimming up and down. Well, I'm all grown up, I don't scare easy no more. You, you and, and I, I both know. Welcome to another episode of Something in the Water. How y'all doing? Dave, what you got there? I'm having a hot banana coffee. Oh. Myself. Well, that. Y'all want some? <laughs> Our guest tonight, hot banana coffee. All the way from St. Simon's Golden Isles, I guess you could call it. Uh, Mr. Ashton Rowland, Miss Dakota Allen. Thank you for having us, Dave. Hot banana coffee. That's right. Who came up with that? Oh, well. Uh, let's say, uh, that's a good story. Uh, <laughs> uh, when we when we first started playing, it was uh, it, we were playing this open mic at this place called Bartless that no longer exists. Uh, R.I.P. We're both we both get on like health kicks really bad, like on and off kind of thing. And uh, Ashton was asking me about any like quick morning recipes I have, you know. And I was like, oh, I, I like to make this like protein smoothie that's got coffee in it. And you know, he I was telling what's in it, like little almond milk, little bananas. And he thought I put hot coffee in it. Like, and he's like, oh, hot, hot banana coffee. <laughs> that sounds disgusting. And she yeah. was like, uh. And then I remember uh, texting her like <laughs> later that night. I was like, "Hey, by the way, that's our band name now." <laughs> yeah, it kind of started as like yeah. a joke, and we'd like introduce ourselves at the open mic as Hot Banana Coffee, and then we picked up traction too fast, and we couldn't change it at that point. And, like, uh, we, yeah, it's and a good thing. Some people loved it, some people hated it, and the more they hated it, the more we loved it. <laughs> that's right; they don't forget that. it yeah. either. I yeah. can relate to that with the Pine Box Dwellers. It was <laughs> like, know. what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I've always wondered that, and I've. You know, I've talked to y'all several times. I've never asked you because I'm sure everybody else does. But I just like <laughs> the mystery of, you know, it's kind of takes the piss out of it to know, I guess. But I right. was thinking, uh, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I had something in my mind. We, we play places and uh, a lot of times people will have our name on the board and people don't even realize we're the band. They think we're like the special of the yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, right, yeah. They're like, what's your name? I, like, yeah. it's right there. They're like, oh, we thought that was uh, a that, that crossed my mind, too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Tonight, hopping in. Yeah, I've coffee. played places where people thought I was shrimp combo before. <laughs> uh, it's just uh, weird. But uh, nine ninety nine. Do y'all ever get called crazy stuff by <laughs> Absolutely. the state? Yeah. Absolutely. Like, people people coffee, remember no, 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 your hot, the hot bananas. Yeah, we get the hot bananas. We get a. Uh, we've got banana pudding one time. <laughs> y'all are the, the banana band. The banana the band. band. Yeah. yeah, right. You know. There's some inappropriate ones here and there, but people remember the banana part, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, no, the coffee no gets coffee? lost. In, no, 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 that coffee. one. That yeah. one gets lost in translation. Well, it's definitely a cool name, and it's very original, too, oh. and it's got a good story behind it. Hey, so, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> I like how you, you have the HBC logo yeah. with, that looks like um, take, take yeah, care of business. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, all her. that's uh, very Clever. I like Thank that. you. Uh, my tattoo artist designed that actually, and cool. he thought it was hilarious. That's um, awesome. You know, because all I all I said when I messaged him, I was like, "Look, you know, we typically go by the HBC. Mm -hmm. I kind of want a banana like in the Warhol style." And he was like, "Hold on, I got you." Yeah, yeah. And that's what he sent me, and I loved it. Yeah, Immediately like loved the it. Banana made, lightning bolt. Oh out. yeah, made stickers that's and awesome. everything out of it. I saw somebody on your Facebook page doing a pancake. Oh yeah, that yeah, was all that you. Was, uh, that was uh, a Dual great pancake. artist. Yeah, it was. Yeah, uh, he's like a great. world. Oh, 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 I did see that. Where the yeah, I was in a, made a pancake. St. Okay. Louis recently. Uh, and yeah, awesome. Okay, killed cool. it. Yeah, and you got a good following too. Working on it. Working. Yeah, following. working on it. Yeah. Y'all yeah. yeah. been doing like an emo night 
right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Reads Apothecary yeah. in Brunswick. That's uh, turned into a big hit. Oh, yeah. Uh, I am very stoked about that. At least in Brunswick, there's not like a lot of quote unquote alternative events yeah. or things of that nature. So the first one was kind of like an accident because he was out of town and my good buddy Shane Hendricks, who's an, a phenomenal guitar player, um, he filled in and we just did an emo night because that's what we knew. You know, that's the music we both knew to mm-hmm. learn in two days. And then when he came back, I was like, hey, this thing kind of did well. You know, we should keep doing it. And now we've had what, one one a month for every, like every month since every uh, month. Since so did y'all learn like a whole new some of it, some of so it we what, already played. I know that y'all probably played some of those songs already, but like, was it like, yeah, yeah it a was lot of homework to a lot of homework. Uh, yeah, especially for our off. drummer because <laughs> yeah. he doesn't really listen to all of it. Um, <laughs> so getting him to learn everything was kind of yeah. interesting, but we really like to uh, post every now and then on our Instagram before the Emo Nights coming up and be like, hey, what do you guys want to hear? And, you know, people respond and we'll try to take their song requests if it's doable with a three piece yeah. band. Cause a lot of that music. A lot of those songs were like way up there. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they've got a lot of like the screamy, screamy thing going mm-hmm. on, which we have to figure out how to sing it and things of that nature. But it's been very fun. Well, clue me back in. Uh, uh, Cause I'm old. <laughs> Where, what is emo? Um, so uh, name we, me some emo songs. Uh, let's see. It's early two thousands, like pop punk. So pop punk. like okay. Fallout Boy and okay. My Chemical Romance okay. and Paramore. Yeah, I've heard Sunny it. Day Real Estate. I've heard yeah, we do. We do the we yeah. do the older punk stuff too. Mm. Like the 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 Bayside, the Sunny yeah. Day Real Estate. Which the one no of y'all effects. screams the best? Her. <laughs> hey, it's questionable. It depends. Give him a little. <laughs> It really, the, the fucking, you know, yeah, it depends on <laughs> how many drinks deep I am, you know. <laughs> I'm still figuring out the singing thing. She's over here, like, mastering the different uh, screens. Whatever, yeah. Well, um, I caught y'all probably this year, earlier this year, a lot earlier this last year, actually. Happy New Year. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> and uh, I was very impressed. I saw y'all at Reed's. Oh. Oh, thank you. Uh, and uh, I think I introduced myself. I hope I did. Uh, probably cross that bridge like, hey, I'm Connor's daddy, <laughs> you know. And yeah, mm-hmm. hey, yeah, we know him. <laughs> and uh, but uh, seemed to me like y'all uh, y- y'all were pulling out some uh, uh, old school too in there, you know, working into your set. So I think. Ain't nothing older schooler than this right here, right? <laughs> oh, definitely, yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's what I appreciate. I appreciate uh, going out here, young folks like y'all, paying tribute to songs from that decade, you know? Yeah. 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 It's kind of it's kind of how it started is uh, we kind of bonded over this uh, love of, like, all types of music and mm-hmm. every decade, every generation. I As mean, it, yeah. these emo notes, I mean, we, we lean into the stuff – that kind of genre that we really enjoy, but mm-hmm. at the core, like it, we both love so many different types of music and we're, I've learned so much new music from her and hopefully vice versa. Vice versa yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's kind of just keeps us fresh and always learning something new. So it's never right. in a rut. Mm-hmm. I, I think the goal has really always been at least for the cover shows that are just regular shows, not the emo nights or yeah. anything, but it's really been just to have something for everybody. Because you do have like the the typical bar scene music, Mm -hmm. you know, that you hear everywhere you go, especially Mm -hmm. like in the South, you know, you get the classics going on, which are great. We love them. But we definitely wanted to like incorporate something for like the younger kids coming into the bar and their parents and whoever else is in the bar. Like everybody's Mm going to hear something that they can vibe with that really, you know, you got to you guys bring a something that's not being offered in the area for sure, you know. That's that's the goal. That's, cool. that's the mission. Yeah, and it is yeah. a good thing. And it's uh working for y'all, man. Y'all we heard about I heard about y'all before I heard you, you know, like, oh, like man, wow, you gotta really? this banana cool. band there, good. <laughs> the banana band. The banana yeah. band. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually right back at you, to be to be honest. Um I heard a lot about Pine Box Dwellers and I was like, What? Oh my oh, yeah. god, that's crazy. Yeah. I should go I should go check them out. And I did, and I was like, Yes, in love. Y'all did that uh what is it? Uh, Mexico by Cake. Oh, yeah. Lost my mind. <sighs> oh my gosh. I've never not, heard. Uh, Ashton played with us. Yeah, I played that with yeah, you guys too. Yeah, that was you fun. Did. I was like, oh. I've never heard Cake by a cover band like in the, in the area. And it really, I don't know. Well, we thought we were like, man, if we do this, everybody's going to love it. And like, literally, nobody knew it. <laughs> nobody knows it. Nobody gets it. 
I was like, right. what? If it's not like short skirt, long jacket, yeah. or yeah. going the but distance like, or whatever, the, this, you know? It's not even that, you know, it's a deep cut, I guess. But. I, I, th- I think the one night I played with you guys in Reeds uh, was the first time. I think Connor sang, what was that one other 90s? Like, uh, the pavement? Pavement song. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, I was so hyped, and I was like, and I think it was the same thing. Everybody was like, what is this? But I was just over here giggling and yeah. dying, mm-hmm. loving it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We we try to do and like y'all. I mean, we try to do some obscure but cool loved covers covers. You know. Yeah. But um, sometimes it's over their heads. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do some stuff for you sometimes. Yeah. Like, right. it's, like, it's just for us. I do eighty percent of it for me. For yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's it's definitely a connection. You like, know, I like I refuse to do that. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's for it's an experience for both you and the audience member. By by every means, like whatever. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. I love that. But also, sometimes you're like, man, I really want to play this song by this band. I really, yeah. really love, and I really don't care if they're gonna like it yeah. because right. I'm gonna like it. Right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I want y'all to have a good time, but yeah, I'm but also do. right, y'all can vibe in a minute. Here's this song that I like. You I, know, I, I gotta get mine too. You know, yeah. <laughs> well, tell us uh, a little something about y'all's uh, person. Uh, let's get personal. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, Originally, uh, origins. Let's see. Uh, you're originally from Baxley, Baxley, right? Georgia, and uh, and you're originally from Columbia. I'm from Brunswick originally. From Brunswick originally. Yeah, that's yeah. right. You, but you uh, back in Tudor, Columbus. Right? Oh yeah. yeah. So uh, my dad lives on the Alabama side, and I stay with him uh, in Fort Mitchell uh, while I'm going to college to obtain a Bachelor of the Arts and. <laughs> Theater performance. There you go. Oh. <laughs> Another thing in common with Connor. Yeah. yeah. Really? Studying theater uh, up there at UGA wow. for a while. Yeah. Oh, nice. yeah, it's um it's what I did in high school. So I kinda like yeah. panic picked and that's what I did. Uh mm-hmm. but I love it and I've kind of gotten more on the like audio visual like <clears throat> technology side of it. Cool. Yeah, so I've been doing a lot, of, especially with COVID, you know, Stage actors are like, and oh, absolutely, kind of yeah. yeah, yeah. During COVID, actors lost a lot of jobs, and I was like, mm, maybe I shouldn't do that, you know, I kind of want to be financially stable and not have to <laughs> worry about feeding myself, you know, so I've learned a lot of a lot of things, both like through lighting and sound for theatrical productions and like staging and stuff, but yeah. also just like I can I can fix a socket in my house, like, you know what I mean? Like, I think that is so cool, I, I don't know. <laughs> I can solder like that's crazy. Yeah, I never thought I'd learn how to do that. <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, what is that flux? Yeah, isn't that the uh, stuff that you solder with? I thought it was mm. solder. Flux it's just solder. I, I flux don't know. capacitor. Flux. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and you could uh, translate that over from theater to uh, uh, festivals too. I mean, oh, absolutely. Easy. Yeah. Just, psh- good if one of our cables goes out i'm on yeah. it you know what i mean mm-hmm. i don't know from the best. Mm-hmm. i did i learned from the best the um best. anthony stubelic uh, yeah. Shout out. Anthony. my yeah. my mentor and herb friend spring old herb spring, spring cheese, cheese. Um, man. <laughs> which he actually really got me playing music by myself too uh, i used to play in this little duo with one of my friends named evan at palm coast when they still did an open mm-hmm. mic and uh, I, th- I had to have been 16 and one night he didn't show up and anthony's like i know you can play the guitar by yourself I'm like, don't out me like that. I'm going to cry. And he signed me up without telling me and like made me play by myself on stage. And I did like Pearl Jam and Sublime. And I was shaking in the knees the whole time. I thought I was going to pee on myself, but I did it. You know, I don't know. A little bit of pee. A little bit of pee. (laughs) Just a little, just a little, little sprinkle. But I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. I owe a lot to him. He's, he's been very good to me. Um, Evan. Oh, no, Anthony. Anthony. Oh, Anthony. Yeah. Anthony, yeah. 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 Run sound gotcha. over there. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's who, uh, I, who I work with doing mm-hmm. the audiovisual stuff. Mm-hmm. He's taught me a lot with that, East. too. AV East, if you need anything done in Brunswick, St. Simons, or Jekyll. He's the man. He's yeah. the man. Mm-hmm. And uh, I didn't know Dakota at the time, but uh, like she said, the Palm Coast Open Mic was like a staple of the area. It yeah. was every Monday night. Uh, anybody and everybody was there, and... Um, I remember I didn't know her at the time, but I remember seeing her there because like you don't hear anybody covering like Black Bar Pearl Jam, and she was there belting it mm-hmm. by herself. And when and I just remember for, like it was like a year or so, and just I was like, man, like every time it was it was great. And then meeting like years later during 
2020. Yeah. Right. We played a show together when you were in White Lighter Club. Yeah. And I still really didn't know you then. What was that? Right before you went to Cuba? Yeah, it was right before. Uh, she was in Winged Mercury. Winged Mercury. Mercury. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, my, my the little jam band these I were had. Bands, Winged yeah. Mercury and, and White Lighter Club. White Lighter mm-hmm. Club. That was Club. one of our bands. And, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we played on the same bill at Palm Coast, I think. And mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, we did. That was crazy. That's when I, that was the night I think I took that picture of you. Yeah. That was in that. I had a photography show at a gallery in downtown Brunswick, and I had this picture of Ashton. I had no idea who he was, but he was like playing a chord, and it was just his middle finger sticking up. And it was painted. My nails, my middle fingers were painted black. I thought it was hilarious. So I was like, I'm putting that picture in the gallery. It's hilarious. I love it. She called it Freebird. Yeah, it was called Freebird. And um, all right. What is that in your music room now? Yeah, yeah. She gave it to me as a gift years later, and uh, I've got it hanging in my music room at the house, and. Uh, Awesome. It's a cool, cool little. <laughs> Your nod to Johnny Cash. Yeah, exactly. Ain't it? Johnny uh-huh. Cash he did it first. Uh, <laughs> he put. He didn't. He put that in the country music news or something like that <laughs> as a message to Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he took it out of oh, hand or something. Was that was that at a specific <laughs> show? That picture. I've always wondered if that was like from San Quentin or. I don't know what show it was from, but it was some. The record label had pissed him off or something. Yeah, and I can't remember. I can't. I don't remember what it was about, but he took out an ad, and that was like a full page okay. Rolling Stone. How punk just rock! Like, and he was, yeah, it was I love punk that. rock, and that it, had, so it had some cool. words about something. But punk rock <laughs> is Johnny Cash stomping the <laughs> the stage lights out <laughs> at the Ryman at the Ryman Auditorium. <laughs> oh, <God. you> know? <laughs> that might have been the night he shot the bird too. Maybe. Goodness gracious! Oh. When did you start playing? Did, was it in show choir? I what started was it before that. Oh, I started playing in uh, eighth grade. I was uh, <laughs> in middle school. Yeah, I was, I was living in Statesboro at the time. Went to Southeast Bullock Middle, hey. and uh, mm-hmm. I, I got my first acoustic. And uh, first two chords I learned, my dad taught me were D and G, and I played the little that little in part to Patience by Guns and Roses. Yeah, mm-hmm. D and G back and forth. I played that must probably <laughs> might have been three months, just those two chords back and forth, trying to get it. My mom probably sick of it. Yeah. I'd go outside and play it for hours, and then uh, we moved back to Baxley, and uh, I was that weird kid that would go to the library during lunch, and I'd get on there and I'd get on like UltimateGuitar.com and learning guitar tabs, mm-hmm. and, and I'd print them out and I'd pay twenty five cents a page or whatever, and print out guitar tabs, go home and try to, you know, love song by Tesla or whatever, just trying to figure out the guitar, and uh, that was my everyday how, routine. How old are you, Ashton? I'm twenty six, and you were looking up love song by Tesla. Oh, dude, my the first, that was time, the first concert I saw, by the way, when I was really? 15. My dad cried. My, my, my dad cried the first time I played that little intro. Like, and I messed up so many times. That little classical. That was one of the first things I learned too. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Dang. Many years before that. Wow. <laughs> You've seen all the people I want to see. I never yeah. get to Buckley. Oh. I started feeling bad because everybody I would see would die six months later. No. <laughs> got the. Is it me? Pine box dwellers. Yeah, like the curse. <laughs> <clears throat> Goodness. Uh, so you said uh, you were called out by uh, Anthony at the Palm Coast thing. Oh, absolutely! And you had to play guitar. Oh, yeah. So you yourself taught as well. Yes. Or, um. I, I mean, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> I do not. Call but you myself. don't play in, uh, guitar in the group. Not in this, this band. Group. No. Yeah. Um. That not was yet. like. Don't tell me little, that. Little right. you know. Uh. The band before this, I played guitar in. Um. I'm strictly rhythm. I can't play a bar chord to save my life. Uh. And I think that's fine. Yeah. Um, of course. You yeah. know. You got um, Each two is yeah. Right. yeah. Um. So I used to play in the jam band, doing that kind of thing. But then with this band, I don't know. I feel like I sing better and have a better stage presence when I don't have something in my hands. Um, you definitely have a stage presence, that's for sure. Thank you. Yes. Uh, it, it used to be not that. Um, so I think we've I think we've all come a long way uh, with our performance and the way we look on stage. Mm-hmm. But um, I can play the guitar when I want to, uh, bass here and there. Mm-hmm. I was a drummer in school. I probably wouldn't sound very good if I tried to do it now. Uh, but you Drum. know. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh, I could probably like play like Sunday morning by Maroon Five, and that's it. You know, something super soft and simple. And well, I I played that one Alkaline Trio song. Oh yeah, Emo yeah. Night. Emo Night. My brother didn't know a song, so he kind of sat down, and uh, I was singing this song "Radio" by Alkaline Trio, and uh, I hear the drums behind me going. I'm like, okay. And then I finish the song, and I come out of the you know, you 
mm-hmm. in the zone. And I look back and she's on the drums. I'm like, whoa. Mm-hmm. I got really mad at Gabe because I'm like, dude, this song is so simple. It's so easy. It's slow. It's like a simple beat. Yeah, and I was he, trying to teach it to him. And he's like, no, I'm not going to play it. I was like, then I will. Are he, you kidding me? My, my brother, our drummer, he's a perfectionist. And Absolutely. He, when he like. Whereas I kind of change things up if he if he listens to a song he has a like note for note right. yeah. and uh, give him props for that. So how long did you guys come up playing together? Like, <coughs> yeah, learning so instruments he, together. I always throw, throw it in his face. Yeah, um, our mom was grateful. She bought us a drum set whenever he was probably like ten. So I was probably however our differences and uh, she bought us the drum. You're yeah, older. He, yeah, uh, he's a uh, he's twenty. I'm the oldest of three, and uh, so I was playing drums a little bit. And I taught him a couple of beats, like just simple four four, and then he was better than I'll ever be in like a few months. And mm. uh, I, I can still do the same little four four beat, and he's just. But you got him started. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll throw yeah. in his face. I've taught a lot of people to play, play yeah, guitar that are way better than me. Like, yeah. Like, what the hell? He's absolutely <laughs> stellar. Like uh, when he was in, I think the first time I saw him play was when they were still in, doing the White Lighter Club thing. Mm-hmm. Wasn't he like 14? Yeah, so uh, White Lighter Club, uh, myself and uh, Brando Heron, um, he, we started this band together and uh, writing these original songs. And uh, we had a few, like three or four songs, and we had a handful. We wanted to go to Atlanta to record them with our friend Lane Silva from Good Fires. He did a demo for us, and I got my brother Gabe, who was 14 at the time, and I said, hey, you want to go record a demo, like a, a little EP for us? Mm-hmm. He never heard the songs. He met Brandon the same exact day at my apartment at the time in Brunswick, and we drove up to Atlanta listening to the demos, and he uh-huh. did drum tracks, and the band was kind of officially started right on the spot. Yeah, and cool. uh we played in this place. I don't know if you remember uh, Heebie Jeebies in Brunswick oh, yeah. on Norwich. Uh-huh. Uh, shout out to Tony. Mm-hmm. Um, that place was like the hub for original music and punk rock mm-hmm. and anything <clears throat> alternative. And uh, we played our f- very first live gigs, like outside of church or show choir, there. And uh, our mom came to the first show, and we opened for this band who was uh, had a very interesting name. And they're and set up in our small our religious mother uh the time is like my 14 year old son is not coming here ever. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah is it something we can say i don't think so oh, i don't really? think is that bad oh uh, not that bad it's just we don't really they were a great band i love them they, watching them this show, yeah. Yeah, they, they were great i love but they're they had a like an explicit name and right their entire setup was a little maybe not for her taste but, but we loved it and uh we'll just call them the headliners <laughs> yeah they were the headliners we opened up for and uh yeah, she didn't. She didn't know how to take it. So, but uh, she was gracious enough to let us be as loud as we want to all day long, mm-hmm. playing our instruments, playing whatever music we wanted to, uh, as long as we were on church on Sundays, playing there. Mm-hmm. So you grew up playing in church too. Yep, absolutely. There in Baxley, uh, every Sunday, Wednesdays, playing, and that's where I give a lot of my credit to. Was a uh, pianists are the best musicians in my mind. They just know mm-hmm. the theory and everything, and. Our leader, Javen, was um, fant- he's a fantastic musician, and we'd go through services and have our songs, and then he'd change keys last second, so I had to like do in my mind. Mm. So I got so used to, like he'd pull out songs out of nowhere in the middle of a service and just be like, A-flat, and I'd have to follow along and like listen to him and try to fault keep up, and it was, uh, it was a lot. But uh, You learn a lot. I know yeah. That it's kind of pressure and live, like I've... Yeah, gotten a lot from that where people are like what I'm like if if I knew that's what I was getting myself into, yeah, yeah. I'd be like I don't know. But like when you're up there, like you got to go. You know? But what we do now, like with that, we I wouldn't be able to do it without like those years of getting like just thrown on the fire. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So yeah. that uh, Baptist church or it was a Baxley Church of God. Church of God. Okay. Yeah. You. How about your uh, history? When did you know you were going to be musical? Uh, well, um, allegedly, I've always known, as my mother tells it. Uh, I used to stand on my grandmother's coffee table, apparently, and sing Gwen Stefani to the whole family. <laughs> um, Perfect. She still does. I still do. But, uh, you know, <coughs> like, underneath it all. You know, like, I don't know. Um, <laughs> that was the... That was the clue. <laughs> that had to have been it. And uh, we've I've always played music. Um, in elementary school, you know, you start with a recorder, you know, mm-hmm. and you get your little recorder mm-hmm. karate belts from playing the songs. And I, I started on clarinet uh, right before middle school. 
Okay. And then I got braces and I used it as an excuse to like play drums because I was like, oh, mom, I can't. I can't my embouchure's all messed up. I can't play the clarinet. <laughs> uh, my brother played the drums and I thought it was really cool. I was like, I want to be really cool. I want to mm. play the drums, you know. Um, so you switched to drums in middle school. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I played through like the first two years of high school. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I started doing doing the singing thing at home with my brothers and, you know, that kind of thing. Just only at home. Did you have uh, uh, siblings that were musical as um, well? My brother played the drums, and then we had a friend named Zach who my mom pretty much, like, adopted. He was always at the house. Yeah. He played the guitar, um, and I started learning the guitar at the same time. So it was that kind of thing. And then by the time that moved on and I started playing music, then him and his brother came along. and right. you know, She adopted us. I didn't. My mother did. He's yeah. my mom's favorite child. Uh, Alleg- <laughs> okay. <laughs> allegedly. Um, <laughs> no, that's a running joke. But uh, yeah, no. Yeah, I've always, <laughs> always done the music thing. My mm-hmm. dad used to like play music with me. He played guitar. Uh, cool. You know, he made me sing at church a few times, things like that. Uh, I really didn't get into it until I was like 16, though, you know, at Palm Coast doing that mm-hmm. thing. Right. Yeah. So y'all both had supportive parents. Yeah. For and the most part, yeah. I did too. Came but, into it through the church. Yeah. yeah kind exactly. of sort, so kind of, sort of, sort of. Here Which is about. Uh, it's about the uh, story of anybody from South Georgia. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. That really, yeah, that's like the first music experience mm-hmm. a lot of people mm-hmm. have in the mm-hmm. Bible Belt. Is where I learned to sing harmony. Always grateful, just, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, not knowing a thing about theory, it was just listening to the choir and watching those notes. The Oak the, Ridge Boys. I was like, I said, okay, there's the bass, and I hear it, you know, and I was following mm-hmm. it visually yeah. and audibly. And so. I can follow vocal music more than I can follow guitar music. I can't yeah. read, I can read vocal lines all day, but oh, yeah. there's more than one note in there, and I'm lost. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know nothing, <laughs> even after you. all that. I don't know what I don't know. <laughs> I used to be really good at reading music, and now I'm like, I've been out of it so long. I, I feel like it. if you gave me a piece of sheet music, I'd look at you like you were insane. Yeah. <laughs> when did you start guitar? Were you in high school? Uh, I was 15 when I got my first <clears throat> guitar for Christmas, and it was untunable. <laughs> oh, yeah. About this long... <laughs> With First a, act. With a bass amp. Oh. <laughs> oh, nice. And, uh, I was like, I don't know much, but this ain't it. Man. That would probably be like a, a, a top 40 band right now with the yeah. Dimension style. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But we're going to just do the weirdest was, thing we can think of. Some, and, you know, it was a piece of crap guitar and a piece of crap amp, but that didn't match. But, you are the white stripes. <laughs> but, you know, I just started playing and I took some lessons about three months and then I met other people that were playing and I was like, screw this. You guys are teaching me for free. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, but I also, as far as anything before that, was singing at church in like teen plays and stuff like that. Remember, one was called Friends Forever or some crap. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew this about you. Well, yeah. Well, oh my goodness. <coughs> It's one of my high points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It just goes back to that old thing, you know? Yeah. You couldn't, I, you couldn't get me to sing back then. Not at all. That's right. Well, I was like, that was about the age I was really getting into, like, Waycross got MTV, and uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, I want to do this. Killed the radio star. And uh, yeah. <laughs> and I remember singing at one of them things. I think with my, my cousin, he's like, man, you, you're singing it wrong. You're singing it like you're on MTV or something. <laughs> I'm putting too much breath in it or something. I don't know. Like, Sorry, um, it's called style. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's called an artistic choice. Right. We don't beat artsy when we're singing about the Lord. <laughs> no. <laughs> if you, and if you turn your gain above four or five, yeah. then it's devil music. That's right. <laughs> the gain stays on three and below. You have to turn it up because the devil can't hear you from here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh goodness! <laughs> Who were your uh, big, like influences back then? Like in high school, like oh uh, man, when I was in high school, it was Nirvana and Pearl Jam and all that stuff was coming out. Party you know? on! All right. So yeah, I mean before that, I mean when I was started playing, it was I feel like I'm the one getting interviewed here. <laughs> uh, it was definitely crap. It was like a glam, yeah, metal, just. Crap. Yeah. <laughs> and uh 
But good, you know, there's some good stuff. I'll look back on it. But uh, seems like you know, two years later, it was the changeover was, with Nirvana. It was like, yeah, things that's real. not cool. Right. Spandex is out, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're in Thank holy, God, holy jeans. I, I never had any spandex. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> what about y'all? What was y'all's first influences? What was the first music that y'all heard that you were like, "This is what I want to do. This is this moves me. This speaks to me." Go right ahead. Oh, so I grew up with uh, a lot of Elvis and Gaither vocal band, obviously with my mom and mm-hmm. family and everything. But like, I'll never forget the first time I heard like rock and roll. I got one of my stepdad's CDs and I uh, heard uh, "Rainbow in the Dark" by Dio, Ronnie yeah. James Dio, and Rainbow and, and uh, like it was one of those compilation CDs. And um, I heard that and I was like, and th- then I just against my mom's wishes, I went and stole all the CDs and had my little <laughs> CD player and I'd get on the bus with my headphones and <laughs> listen to like Kiss and uh, GNR Live and all these things. And uh, then I uh, found my own way and I was like, and then Jack Black with "School of Rock." Mm-hmm. It was out, and that between that, Back to the Future with him playing Johnny Be Good, and then just you know Eddie Van Halen tapping on there. Mm-hmm. I was like, I really want to do this, and got Guitar Hero three, and it's a very millennial way to to get into music. But uh, Guitar Hero, I, yeah, Guitar Hero three. That was my soundtrack of my childhood. <laughs> you're doing you're doing better than a lot of millennials. Let me know. yeah, <laughs> but I, I, I would stay up all night playing that game, trying to beat it every single time. No memory card, just starting from the top. Pulling all nighter, beat the game, get to the end, and uh, fell in love. Avenged Sevenfold was like this metal band that was uh, made me want to shred and all that. But also, I was like, uh, I didn't really know a lot of modern music, so I was like the weird kid that was Simon and Garfunkel. Uh, my grandma, my nana was a <clears throat> an English teacher, and she would have me write these essays, and she would like, I want you to understand why this is beautiful, and I want you to know, tell me what the, you think this means. It's not about what they think. So. Wow. She'd give me the lyrics to "Sound of Silence" or "I Am what a Rock." A great and so, inspiration. So, so Paul Simon. Really Paul awesome. Simon is like my. I love yeah. Dylan. I love yeah, McCartney. Yeah. I love all of them, but Paul Simon is my yeah. between him and Tom Waits. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw two. Paul Simon open up for Dylan. Really, in, uh, 90, mm-hmm. ninety-eight in Raleigh. Blood on the Tracks is still one of the greatest, but to me, like I, I can wake up and listen to. I love Rhyming Simon. Uh, that album. <laughs> Yeah, that absolutely. one album right there. If you just listen to that from beginning to end, man. That one, Rosemary's Age in Time is a uh, oh boy, the bridge song. Yeah. And just everything, dangling conversation. I can just mm-hmm. listen to that in the morning. I'm I'm good for the rest of the day. Mm-hmm. Very poetic. What about you, Dakota? <laughs> wow. Uh- <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Um, my mom. Gwen Stefani was <laughs> obviously Gwen a, Stefani. Yeah. Uh, my mom always played a lot of different music for us, um, which I'm very appreciative <laughs> of because I found a lot of genres just through the stuff she used to play us. Mm-hmm. She kept every cassette tape and record she had from high school, awesome. which was awesome. Um, so it'd be any anything from like Van Halen and Zeppelin and ACDC to like Harry Belafonte, you oh, know, wow. like all yeah. kind all over the place. Yeah. A lot of like old country music, Johnny Cash and Patsy Cline, all kinds of stuff. I've just, I've always loved music. But um, I think I really, really got, really, really, really got into it when I was playing the drums and uh, she showed me the Foo Fighters. Uh. I have wanted to be Dave Grohl my entire life. Like, I don't know. Uh, they're absolutely insane. Everything they do is so good. Uh, and then, you know, every time I've have had a different band and a different genre it's changed so when i did the jam band thing it was like very much grateful dead and fish and mo and you know goose and what is it king King gizzard and the lizard wizard you know like the stuff like that Mm -hmm. you know and then i started getting into the like more like grungy emo stuff with the early 2000s pop punk and metalcore and things of that nature um and then started doing that kind of music Used to do blues music, all kinds of stuff. I just wanted to do everything. I wanted to at least try everything yeah. and see, you know, what I fit into best. And what, you know, there's some things you like, there's some things mm-hmm. you don't. But I don't know. I feel like well, that makes you a well-rounded. I love what Graham Parsons said. Uh, he said, uh, "There's two kinds of music, good and bad. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't yeah. just pigeonhole yourself into a style or anything. It's I like a pretty good much polka. that is good or bad." Right. And uh, if you relate to it, then it's good. Mm-hmm. And uh, so 
y'all are very well rounded. That's yeah. We try. Well, yeah, both we try country to be. and western. Yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> country. blues brothers, <laughs> rhythm <laughs> and blues, country and western. <clears throat> Play rock. Well, it's <laughs> evident. It's evident in your shows, and it's evident uh, in conversation and everything. I mean, you're that's a, a good frame to be from. Right. I, I think I went to see uh, the Grand Parsons Festival here in Waycross. I think went there in 2017 was really? the first year that I went. Okay, cool. Had a great time. Uh, good. Uh, lifelong friend. Uh, I think Back City Woods were playing that year. Uh, yeah. Dale and yeah. Uh, you friends with those guys? Yeah, I grew up yeah. with him. Um, uh, he was a friend of my dad, and he actually did my very first guitar Daniel, recording. Daniel, Daniel. Smith. Yeah, Neesmith. Smith. Yeah. And uh, I've been the biggest Back City Woods fan since they started. Yeah. And uh, they're the... Shade Trees Shade now. Trees. Shade Trees now yeah. rebranded, but um, he's still one of my favorite songwriters, mm-hmm. and I'll always like have a special good. place in my yeah, heart. He's a good yeah, guy. we need yeah, to have him is. on. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Great person. Yeah. 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 He used to put on a little uh, uh, Roots Rock uh, yeah. festival. It's called. I guess it was called a festival. Roots Rock Georgia Showcase. Roots. Georgia Roots. Rock showcase. Uh, the making the hummingbird yeah. in, in making with the player too. Three, four years. Yeah. He's the first guy I ever see put a, a a banjo, put a pickup in it, and then run it to a, a wah pedal. And like <laughs> did a like a he was playing, I can't remember what song it was, one of his originals probably, but he yeah. put a banjo with a wah pedal and I was like sixteen, seventeen and it blew my mind. <laughs> Did you ever know a guy named Rusty Bridgers? He was up there around that bunch too. Yeah. He played up. bass. Yeah. 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 That's some good stuff, yeah. Mm-hmm. Man. <laughs> well, what y'all want to do? Y'all want to take a little break and uh, come back? Come back and I I understand that y'all uh, uh, got a, a brand new original. Something like Something that. Like that. Right. It's right. in the works, it's about, yeah. Okay. About, about a day old. Well, it'd be <laughs> great. It'd be yeah. great if we that. could hear cool. it. Yeah, we wrote it just for this. Actually, just right. for this, yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah. You ready to get sad? You ready yeah. to cry a little bit? That's okay with we us. Make it happen. Goodness yeah. gracious. Ain't no music like sad music. <laughs> hey. You know, it is It is 2023. Yeah, I feel kind of <laughs> forlorn right now. <laughs> <laughs> we made it, though. We made it. <laughs> we did. That's well, right. we'll be right back, folks, with a little original song. Thank you all for tuning in. Something in my brain won't let me stray. back everybody uh y'all want to tell us about this uh little song that you wrote a uh, little history on it or anything so it's a brand new song it's about a day old <laughs> yeah day literally old. literally yeah. wrote we, uh, it we we found you know found out we're coming here and uh we said we got to do something special so uh let's throw something together and uh, first song of the new year right? first song first of the new song year. ever um <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah we've awesome. been we've been in this band what two only two, two years we both have original music and different Different yeah. projects. Well, we just as the band as her and I coming together. Yeah, like, hey, as we hot need to, we need to do this. Let's like, all right, do the thing. Yes, What's sir. the name of it? Hot don't, banana don't coffee. Don't have one yet. <laughs> no, it's called, called Hot Banana Coffee. It's called the Ballad, coffee. Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> the Ballad of Hot Banana Coffee. Yeah, Ballad of Hot Banana Coffee. But, uh, okay, this is Yo, what we got so far. Our guest, Hot Banana Coffee. Thank you. Hands on a curb in a parking lot Remembering the people we've forgotten Shoulder blades kissing on the cement Wishing we could feel you again Remember when we liked ourselves Can you taste the adrenaline? Fear that 
glass holding a stone the lower the gun away from my own head we had hope even when we wanted to die we had Memories can be repressed But the way they made us feel comes back with time We can drink our souls to loneliness We can raise a glass to take in bigger strides I swear to God we'll get it We'll make it out alive We had hope Even when we wanted to die We had hope But the light left our eyes We had hope God knows we wanted to die But we had hope That's a, it's very Little interesting. Ditty, That's right? like a we had hope. The first like well, I mean, it's semi depressing, but the first like not <laughs> super <laughs> you know, depressing was, song I've ever written. Yeah. So. What, what touched me about that was um, you're, you're looking back to younger days when yeah. you were you thought at the time you're looking back to the good old days, mm -hmm. but at the time you thought you were suicidal. You know what I mean? Like or a teenage angst of yeah. You know, there's a little uh, like, angst. There's a I'm little. I'm not life. saying you were suicidal. I'm just saying, right, like, right. You know, like speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, screw, Ain't it. screw this. And what, you know. uh, that's that's good. I like that. Yeah, yeah, Ashton Man. was like, "Here's this song," and I'm yeah. sitting there like, oh, "Okay." And I'm looking back on two years of playing. Just in the last two years, I mean, so many crazy things have happened. We've all changed as people and learned a lot of things. We went through a pandemic. Boom. You know, we went through a lot of life situations and relationships and all these other things, you know, and I think we're all making the best of it right now. That's a good That's one. That's all man. you can do. I think you know? we all uh, grew a little bit in that as people. Oh, absolutely. You know? yeah. Yeah. But that that right there encapsulates the sound of hot banana coffee right there. That's what grabbed mm -hmm. me about y'all when I heard you live is just the. Dynamics, yeah. the boldness, and the uh, 
the 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 guitar playing and everything it is just thank you it's it's quiet and it comes at you hard at the same time you know yeah beautiful yeah. thank beautiful. you awesome thank you mm-hmm. thanks so much y'all got something else yeah, yeah we can, uh, we can. this what is this the the song we typically open like every set with when yeah, we're we, playing by we got something we can sing together <laughs> yeah get a let, little, let ashton little. do a little a little singing here yeah. too got a tune because we care tune. you tune because you care <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> this next one is a cover it is uh, a cover by shaky, shaky grace, grace. Yeah. Oh, yeah yeah cool. love this song from the first time i heard it so good i think this is the first uh we first started playing music together and like hey send me some songs i'll send you some she sent me some and i was like well i've never really duetted much like i haven't you know mm-hmm. had to do harmony so i was like this was, a, this was a really good challenge for me to like let's yeah i mean luckily i'm cheating i'm just singing the melody she's doing all the hard work but uh it's still it's still good practice but it's still great yeah but uh it, the song kind of just stuck around in the set and we love it yeah it's just a good one a lot of people like it too you yeah know? it's one of those it's it a little loud so i'm gonna back up a little bit yeah you better sc- scooch I get you gonna be hollering. Hollering, yeah. Stopping and hollering. Stopping and hollering. It's called a uh, dearly departed.
Yeah. Oh. Nice. Oh. Nice. Not so hard not to sing along. Mess Ain't that it? Up. <laughs> right? That's such a good one. That's a good one. Oh. The song never gets old. Some songs, you know, yeah. you're just like, we need a break. Right. But this one. Every time we play that, I just want to like stomp on the ground that, and like stomp and hold it. Was that a B? That... Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Y'all are so animated when you sing too. That's how you can tell that you love what you're doing. We're usually oh, standing yeah. like squirming. Oh, that absolutely. Translates yeah. over you get to us the about... audience. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was wondering how we were going to put y'all on a seat and yeah. try to get y'all to do something. Yeah, you get us about two drinks deep standing up at Reed's <laughs> Apothecary. Yeah, and, uh, that's over. right. Uh, getting the floor and whatnot. Listen to your therapy is expensive. <laughs> that's, yeah, I say that. I'm like, listen, y'all, therapy is expensive. Listen to us. It's free. Free. Yeah. Unless you want to tip. <laughs> that's right. Unless you feel so inclined. It's to give us your hard-earned dollar. Right. You want to take it old school for a sec? I absolutely would. What's up? Let's Dave, go. I We're feel like you like this. Lay it on me. This is a song my mama used to play Surpri- on a record in, in the kitchen and sing it to me and all, all that. Right. And it's Written. a little different than the original. but Written by Willie Nelson, but made famous by Patsy Cline. That's right. Nice. Mm. That sounds like crazy. <laughs> ben, you're crazy. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> my brother told me the other night that that song was originally titled Stupid. <laughs> I don't know if he was that was his dry wit or anything, but uh, well, Gary, that was his dry wit. I yeah. Get it. yeah, okay, <laughs> it just don't fit. <laughs> Thank y'all. Thank All you. right. time we played that i was terrified i was like i'm gonna Same. you can't you can't oh, play dude. that song you mess, like you can't, can't do that that's up. crazy if i mess well, it up you, i'll cry yeah <laughs> y'all, y'all own that though man yeah i can assure you you didn't mess that up oh no. good yeah. Shoo. goodness man. gracious <laughs> but, yeah. that was wonderful thank you, thank you so little much. something for everybody uh, you know y'all uh tell them where you're uh playing next you got any uh It'll just round it's about. You might not have anything yeah. definite yet for this uh, year. But, so uh, uh, we will actually be at a 
Tipsy, Tipsy McSway's Sways. January, January 6th. January 6th, first Friday in Brunswick. Yeah. That's right. right. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to be, depending on the weather, we might be outside, might be inside. We'll yeah. find out. Yeah. Time right. comes. But uh, it's going to be. Always a good time, yeah. It's going to be full band, so we'll have all, all five of us there. Nice. That's yeah. right. Oh, so y'all, do, y'all got a full band. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We started yeah. as a duo, but we have yeah. a loud and rowdy band. And, That's uh, right. They're amazing. Yeah. But uh, for any other. Uh, <laughs> calendar events that we can't recall off the top of our heads um we do have a facebook and instagram hot banana coffee that's it Uh, we post all of our upcoming events on there and uh, any things like articles and podcasts we'll put the link up you know uh so uh hot banana Uh, Coffee. That's right. <laughs> that you know, that's him? crazy. Uh, I didn't know that. <laughs> well, there weren't no fire. He's pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, y'all, it's time for another uh, Uncle Dave's Tale of the Week brought to you by um, Uncle Dave himself. Hot Banana Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> this is a little story that I wrote, and it's uh, talking about New Year's Eve way back in. Uh, the early 90s before uh, some of y'all were born. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, <clears throat> back when Aunt Lynn and I were dating in the early 90s, we spent some memorable New Year's Eve nights in Jacksonville, Florida. 1991, I bought a package deal for a night out at one of Jacksonville's comedy clubs, a romantic supper and comedy show, party hats. Horns and noisemakers, a couple of glasses of champagne about midnight. But the funniest part of that whole evening came as we were navigating US 1 North back home. I was driving while she was sitting in my lap, watching behind us to see where we'd been. <laughs> All right. A year later, we headed back to Duval County to welcome in 93. In between Hilliard and Callahan, the fog was so thick it was impossible to drive, even without a good-looking blonde sitting in the seat with me. So we had no reservations anywhere, and we both agreed it'd be best to turn around and try our luck back home. On the outskirts of Hilliard, there on the right-hand side of US-1 stood the Pines Bar, its neon lights beckoning through the fog like a haven for New Year's Eve revelers. It don't look nothing like that now, folks. <laughs> I think the brick with bar is still standing. Everything know, else is just eat up. <clears throat> uh, we pulled up, strolled inside, and there in the little side room was a stage occupied by an old friend and musician, Farrell Howell, former lead singer for his most enduring group, the Seldom Blues Band out of Waycross, Georgia. <clears throat> Over the years, the popular band seldom had the same members going through several personnel changes. But in the late 80s, Seldom Blues went into Hickory Wind Studios owned by local songwriter Billy Ray Heron to record a couple of publishing demos of Heron's songs, George is My Home and Special Friend. I'm jumping ahead, Justin. There we go. Look at there. That's the way we did it in the old days. That's a 45 (laughs) (laughs) in a sleeve. The band was good, the songs were good, and the demos were good. Good enough to land Billy Ray a publishing contract with the Lowry Music Group in Atlanta. I went on to co-write and produce demos with Billy Ray in 1990. Among the 14 or so songs we co-wrote, half of them were published. And Bill Lowry offered us a recording deal on two of them. At Lowry's Southern Track Studio with a top-notch group of session players, we cut The Lovin' You, Backside You, the first ever CD release to radio on Southern Track's records. Farrell borrowed the instrumental mix of You and performed the song at Jacksonville's Crazy Horse Saloon, beating out Tim McGraw, in two consecutive talent contests. Now that should tell you a couple of things. A, the song You was well produced. B, Pharaoh Howell can sing his behind off. 
After losing twice to Farrell, Tim McGraw hightailed it out of Jacksonville, made it big in Nashville, and married Faith Hill. <laughs> poor, Fer- him, poor him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Poor Tim. Farrell, on the, on the other hand, Farrell opened a truck stop in Fargo, Georgia, and continued to play, <laughs> and continued to play music all around South Georgia and North Florida. Always a good-natured soul, Farrell jokes about the turn of events involving Tim McGraw. He said, yeah, he got faith. I got Fargo. <laughs> <laughs> that New Year's Eve, Farrell introduced me as one of the songwriters of You and sang it one more time, giving Aunt Lynn and me a rare chance to dance together. We saw 1993 in along with a lot of nice folks that night, including a Dewberry fella from Waycross. After Pine's Bar closed down, he invited us to his apartment in what used to be a hotel in downtown Hilliard. <laughs> it was the upper right. <clears throat> our hosts parted themselves to sleep, so not wanting to wear out our welcome, we decided to spend the rest of the night in my van outside. It was a mighty good New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Day. Dave. <laughs> New Year's For, Dave. It was on that January morning, our mighty good son, Connor Griffin, was conceived in the back <laughs> Party on. of an Econoline oh, van dead? outside an old hotel in here. What? It was sitting right where that black truck was. <laughs> oh, you can pin it to That's the day, lot. too. Hey. No wonder yeah. he's a drummer. <laughs> I was on the radio. <laughs> Look at that origin story. <clears throat> he loves that story. I'm sure he does. That he does. <laughs> right by that big pole. <laughs> <laughs> Better be thankful for that story. Me and your mama. <laughs> <laughs> Not me and your mama. Man. Well, y'all, it was sure good to have you. Sure good. It was good sure. to be here. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Had a great time. And, uh, Not mm-hmm. a lot of people will travel to do this, so we appreciate y'all traveling yeah. over. Not at all. And yeah. uh, we look forward to crossing paths with you again over there in Brunswick. Since most of our gigs are over that way as well, you know. Right. Same. It's the watering hole. Awesome. Mm-hmm. And we urge y'all to uh, hope y'all enjoyed our podcast this time. And we urge y'all to uh, tune in again. We do two shows a month on uh, on our uh, YouTube and uh, Facebook. And uh, we do have our own website now, somethingwaterpodcast.com. What else we got, Lauren? We got a Patreon Patreon.com. That's where we do the deep end, but you can, uh, what am I doing? Subscribe. We have shirts. Oh, yeah. we have shirts. Like, yeah. <laughs> get your tie together, buddy. <laughs> Something wrong. You're, you're kind of coming apart of <laughs> yeah. Now, we, we have some merch on our website. Uh, we got our first merch. We got t shirts. We're going to add some stuff to it. But uh, we also have a Patreon where we do the deep end. It's a subscribed deal where we do one episode a month. Uh, but it's still just search something in the water on there, but we call it the deep end. Mm-hmm. It's only five bucks a month for subscribers. And the longer you subscribe, you get some free stuff on there as well. And that's, that's the too hot for the internet, uh, stuff. <laughs> yeah. Dave takes his shirt off. That's it where, that's where we belly dance and cuss. We'll have to have y'all back on a <laughs> deep end. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I'll just, yeah, some, I'll get fun. some cardio. Yeah. In. Anything. Oh, on the deep end. oh yeah. yeah. That's right. Take well, thank you all again for washing. Thank our guest, Hot Banana Coffee. Happy uh, New Year, y'all. Yes, thank you so much. Happy, Happy New Year. Year. Happy New Year. See you soon. Hey.